Hello, this is Tara Body, and welcome back to another great episode of God and Therapy with your favorite counselor here. Well, I want to go ahead and just tell you how amazing this season has been with all of my guests. And I pray that you have enjoyed this series called Church Hill. Today, I want to end this series with a great conversation that I think is going to sum, summarize everything up so that uh, you will really leave this understanding that your healing from any church hurt, any church wounds, any misunderstandings of the gospel or your faith is to be healed so that you may go do the good work that God has already set out for you as a believer. Um, we have talked about almost everything through this series. We talked about um, how to heal from church hurt that is caused by leaders who are human, who themselves need salvation, whom themselves are working through their own healing. We talked with the son of the late Bishop Eddie L. Long. We talked with Edward Long Jr., who gave us behind the ministry and showed us that a lot of times what the pastors are preaching are things that they're actually going through and trying to work through. We had minister, pastor, Dr. Deanna Schroes, who talked about her own journey as a pastor that needed healing and it was affecting her ministry. But once she received that healing, she became an even better shepherd of God's people. But for those pastors that do not have that understanding that they need healing, do not have the understanding that they need to work through their issues, a lot of times they will bleed on their congregation. And this is where we got the church hurt from. This is where we had the unhealthy fellowships like uh, the conversation that I had with Brenda Palmer, the Christian influencer and minister of the gospel, as she talked about how sometimes we're looking for fellowship, but we'll stay in toxic environments because we're trying to get connection. But if you don't have a close relationship with God on your own and know who you are in Jesus Christ, you can get pulled into any situation, the wrong type of connections, and it would hinder your relationship with God. So let me start by saying your first relationship has to be with God. But one of the biggest issues a lot of Christians have is that they do not study the word of God on their own. They do not seek to understand what that relationship is supposed to look like. They don't read about the heart of God. They don't understand what is the word of God and what's not. The word of God tells us in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Believe it or not, you're supposed to be reading the Bible on your own. You're supposed to be in the word of God on your own. All someone needs to do is introduce you to the Bible, which is the word of God. And as a Christian, you should be reading it for yourself. Pastor Barry Stevens came and talked about that, how he, everything that he would get would come straight from the pulpit. But then he realized a lot of that teaching was a lot of religion. It was a lot to keep people bound and disciplined. And even though there were some good things, it did not make him feel the love of God. It did not make him feel free in his faith. It did not help him to be a relationship. He had to get in that word and interpret it for himself. And he was able to be a better discipler by understanding people and discipling them the way that Jesus Christ did with love. So because he was able to read the word of God, he was able to finally see the best way to connect with people. But if we're just getting every word for our faith from another human being that could be flawed, that could be dealing with their own issues and trauma and rejection and hurt, they're going to filter all of that hurt through their preaching and their teaching. And so you could be in an environment where somebody's trying to teach the word of God to hold you down, hold you bound, and won't even let you go out into the world and use your gifts and talents the way God wants you to. As we talked to Brother Anthony Jenkins and his wife, Hannah Jenkins, and they talked about using their gifts out here in the world. And we're not going to call it the secular world because the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All of the world belongs to God. Every industry belongs to God. 
And as Christians and believers, those who have the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to be able to go out in every industry and shed the light of Christ there to the unbelievers and show them how to treat each other well in the music industry, in the film industry, in education, in government, in the church, in sports, wherever else you can think of, in the medical field, in the law field, everywhere God's people should be there and show those people how to treat others. That is our role and that's the goal that God had for us. But if you don't know that, if you don't practice that, and if you're not under a believer that's pushing that, you're not going to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. The word of God, Christ told us, go ye and make disciples of all nations. We're supposed to go. The work of God is not to be held just in the four walls of the church. It's no way we can be impactful if we believe that everything we're ever supposed to do with our talents and gifts supposed to be done in the four walls of a church building. We are the church. I was looking at a, a, a video the other day, a young lady put on a video and she says when she needs to get away from, to get away with God and spend time with him, she goes and she drives up these mountains. She said, but on one particular occasion, she drove through the mountains and God told her to stop on the side of the road. And she didn't know why she had her, her praise music blasting through the windows and she thought about turning it down and God told her don't turn it down keep your windows down keep blasting this music and she was on the side of the road on a mountainside and she said she was just praising God and closing her eyes and she said she opened her eyes and a woman was standing in front of her car praising the Lord with her and she said the woman told her that she had been on a hike through the Appalachian Mountains for two weeks because she was trying to find God. She had fallen away from God and went on a journey to find him. She said, and when she heard that music, she knew God had met her in that moment. And she felt the anointing of the Holy spirit for her life. And it's simply because another woman heard God and stopped. That's ministry. That's you making yourself available. That's you saying, Holy spirit, lead me to somebody who has lost their way. We are supposed to be the church out here in the streets, making ourselves available on everyday occurrences. I'm sorry if you don't have a pastor that's telling you that, but I'm telling you here today, everybody is a disciple of Jesus Christ who accepts him as their Lord and savior. Once you have been accepted into the body of Christ, into the kingdom of God, you are now commanded to fulfill that great commission and go tell everybody about Jesus, how he will save their souls by forgiving them for their sins, washing them clean, allowing them to repent. They don't have to stay in guilt and shame. They don't have to stay burdened down. They can be delivered from any sin that they've ever been caught up in. They can be delivered from it. They can disconnect out of that, be given a whole new life. A whole new life. He can make all things new and then they can go do it for someone else. They are then commissioned to go do it for someone else. Once you receive the help of the Holy Spirit, which you should definitely be asking for, is one thing to pray the prayer of salvation. Is another thing to get baptized. But then the third thing is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have the anointing of God in your life. He will give you wisdom in those moments like that young lady in her, in her car. He will give you moments of when to, to fellowship with someone, when to share the gospel with someone, what to say to them. He will connect you with people who have your testimony, who you can speak directly to. See, a lot of you are not walking in ministry because your testimony and the things that you went through are keeping you from moving forward. Your traumas, you're not able to see through this perspective of God that the traumas are a to be healed so that you know the power of God. He can heal you and rise you up out of that trauma grave. You, you're supposed to first feel that for yourself. Get that deliverance. Connect with somebody to walk you through salvation, redemption, and deliverance. 
But once it's done for you, then you go and talk to others who have the same trauma, the same issues. And you tell them if Jesus can deliver me, heal me and save me, he can do the same for you. That's what those things are for. They're not meant to hurt you. It's to give you something to relate to another person on, to talk about the healing power of God. If you never had anything that broke your heart, you would not be in a space to really feel his redemption and love and healing. How do you know the beautiful feeling it is to be made whole if you were never broken? A lot of us, because God healed us, made us whole is why we preach and we minister and we teach because we know what it feels like to be counted down, to be out and have God save your life and put you back together again. Better than before. Better than you ever were before. God can give you an entire new existence that you could not have asked for or imagined. What you have today, if you have not received that salvation and Holy Spirit and the gift of going out and discipling others, you have not flipped to the other part of your story. You may still be sitting in pain and, and, and trauma and sickness because you have not connected to God. I get it. You have went to church a thousand times and you say, I still feel the same way. Well, a lot of people receive their healing and salvation with them and God alone. A lot of people have testimonies of being alone in the room and saying, God, I just really need you to change me, to deliver me, to set me free of the things that had me bound. But if you don't get in that word where you can increase your faith and see how many people he did that for in the word, you may not have the faith to believe he can do it. This is why the good proper fellowship is good because you may not read the word, but you may hear somebody else's testimony and be delivered by that and believe God, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. The Bible is full of testimonies of the heart of God for mankind. And if you ever read it in its completion, <laughs> you will see this love story between a creator and what he created, that he created us for dominion. He created us to have authority in the earth. He did not create you to sit under the foot of the enemy. He didn't create you to live a low level life. He created you to live in joy in prosperity. And he says, even as your soul prosper, I wish that you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prosper. Yes, he wants your soul to do well and to prosper and be good. But he also wants your life to be good. Believe it or not, joy is a fruit of the spirit. And if you have never had joy in your life, joy is different. Joy is higher than happiness. See, happiness, something has to be happening for you to feel good. Joy means no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what I've been through, I have found an incredible joy and sense of peace in God. That he is a loving father. So no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I see in my life, no matter my trials and tribulations, he loves me. He has an incredible love for me. See, if you can't get that basic principle down, is that God loved me. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that, sh that whoever shall believe in him will have eternal life. It starts with he loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, Christ, Jesus the Christ, to die. Meaning he knows that we have a free will and we have been sinful and we're going to mess up because we're learning, we're growing, we're maturing, we're coming out of our family patterns. A lot of us were taught things that we shouldn't have been taught. We were not given the word of God. Our parents weren't in the word, rightly dividing that word. They weren't doing what they're supposed to do. They were failing. And so he knows we come in flawed. We are born into iniquity. So we come with these fleshly desires. We come with sin. And so this is why he says we have to be born again into his kingdom. But once we are born again into the kingdom of God, 
Once we are born, we are baptized down and died to our old self and risen again. Once we are born again, then he is our father, a loving, protecting, providing father. And a father that could never leave you nor forsake you. I know mankind does. I know people do. But God would never. And a lot of times he's allowing things to happen in your life so that you will run back to him. He is not punishing you. He's just letting you get to a space of where you need him. Where you will call on him. And you will move towards him. A lot of people that are going through a lot of things right now is because you are disconnected. You are not close to God. You have fallen away. You know it. You feel it. You see it. Even some form of believers are current believers. You believe, but you don't. You are wavering in your faith. And it's because you are not getting connected to the father for real. You have not had an encounter with God to where you know that he loves you incredibly. To where you know that he is on your side. You have not spent that time to know his heart towards you. And that you would know that anytime he's calling you out of sin or calling you out of the things that he has not called you to. It's because he's trying to call you into something better. Something greater. A greater life. God is never calling you into a downgrade. He's never trying to downgrade you. That would be poor advertisement of how good of a father he is to downgrade his children. God needs you to be the head. He needs you actually to be more successful than everybody. To look like you are doing well. He wants you to have things. He wants you to prosper and be in favor. He don't want you to just look like it. He wants you to be it. He wants us to be wealthy. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to have a good mind and a good spirit. Because if we are healthy, wealthy, and doing well, others will want to be his children too. They will wonder, what is that you have over there? What is going on in your life? I want that. So if that's not the life that you're living, God is trying to get you to that space. He really is. I know you're going through some things in your life that you don't like. But understand a loving father is going to do whatever it takes to get you on the path you're supposed to be on. That's a good path. It's something that you would never, ever imagine for yourself. You would have never imagined how much he really wants to bless you. You couldn't. Is nowhere in the pattern of your life. You haven't seen it through your parents. You haven't seen it in anybody around you because you are unique. And he has a unique plan and a unique purpose for your life. And I want you to know, no matter your education, no matter any titles you have, no matter if you are a woman, it doesn't matter. Any of that doesn't matter because God wants You to minister and to know he anointed you, he gifted you, he has certain things for you. He has much things for you. And he knows that he knows what's inside of you. This is why you have to spend time with him so that you can start to learn what your gifts and talents are. So that you can begin to discern what he wants you to do, who he wants you to talk to. We make it so complicated. We make it way too deep. Jesus was a carpenter. That was his occupation. But every day he wasn't doing that job. (laughs) He was just teaching. He would just start teaching and the crowd would come around him. He would just teach. And when he was done teaching, he walked back off or he'd go to his job or he'd do something else. But we make it so complicated. Everybody won't be in the pulpit. That's not everybody's job. He has called some to be pastors and preachers. He has not called all. But he most definitely have called many of us to teach. And he has called all of us to go and make disciples. Ask him how, how for you, how do you do that? And a lot of times it's simply by explaining to somebody what he did for you. Telling someone your testimony, how he delivered you, how he set you free, how he gave you a new life, how he gave you new hope what he's done in your marriage, what he's done for your family, what he's done for your children. We talked about uh, Hannah. She was on the show talking about her son, who God is really blessing and favoring right now um, in the entertainment industry. 
she talked about telling her son how to have faith in God and believe him for things. And now he's being able to see that. See, even our children, why would we teach them to believe in a God that's not blessing them? Why would we teach them to have faith and not actually tell them how to go out and use their gifts and their talents to have influence and to, and to tell the world about God? It's just that simple. He does not mind you enjoying your talents and gifts and asking him for things. He wants you to have influence. He wants us to have platforms in our area that he has called us to. He says, but once you get there, tell him who sent you. Tell him who got you there. Tell him who's keeping you. Tell, tell them how you walk the way that you do. I know people compliment you and may say, hey, you just have such a sweet spirit. Tell them that it is the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> And without his spirit, I could be anybody else. I had that conversation with JC when we were talking about a lot of us need to stay connected. All of us really do. Because without him, we understand any of us could be walking in the flesh. So don't feel bad when you say, Tara, I don't always get it right. Hey, guess what? No one does. Even your pastor, even your bishop. Oh, they need the Holy Spirit to keep it together. They also need counseling. They also need advisors. It's a lot they're doing to be able to do the good work that they're doing. Most successful pastors will tell you they have advisors. They have people they go to to give them wise counsel. They do. They have to spend devotional time with the Lord. They have to spend time in prayer and fasting. If they don't, all you're going to hear from that pulpit is flesh. You're going to hear their human opinions come out. You're going to hear their personality come through and you will not hear the Holy Spirit. And pastors and preachers, I'm telling you, don't preach, preach without the Holy Spirit, because you will begin to just spew your own thoughts and opinions and character into the congregation. And these people do not need that. They need deliverance. They need to understand what righteousness is. They need to understand how to get it and how to keep it. They need to understand the need for the Holy Spirit. They need to understand the need to read the word of God and what it means to ask the Holy Spirit to interpret it for them so that when they're reading it, they can understand it. They need to have discipleship classes they can go to to learn about their faith. If your church does not have a discipleship class where you are walking people through their faith and explain it to them, then what are you doing? If it's not going to teach them how to walk out their faith, how to be able to learn it to the point they can disciple other people, then your church is just simply for entertainment. It's a social club where you want to gain members to bring them in, to have them pay And then they get no real healing and no real power out of that. And that's not okay because your organization has a purpose in which it is supposed to equip disciples for God. If you strengthen the congregation to that level, it can only help you. It can only serve as a helper for your church because a lot of strong Christians in your church that are prospering, can do a lot in the community. They can do a lot. To ask people to give and they're already at a point of lack because they don't know how to walk out their faith, get into purpose, get to where God wants them to be so that they can grow, you're asking them to give out of lack. And a lot of them believe just by giving is going to miraculously expand their life and it's more than giving. Giving is part of it. Obedience is the biggest thing. God says obedience is better than sacrifice. And a lot of them need to learn to obey in their relationship with God. They need to learn to obey by walking in purpose. They need to learn to obey by using their gifts for God to push the kingdom of God forward. They need to obey by sharing their testimony and and discipling other people. That's what's going to help them to prosper, not them consistently just giving money to your church. And should they give? Absolutely. But also there should be programs and ministries that are equipping people that they're giving to missions, education, helping the homeless, orphans, 
widows is outlined in the Bible, what ministries you should be financing in your churches. And if none of those ministries are in your church, what are you doing? What do you have going on over there? Because you will be held accountable. You will be held accountable for shepherding people away from the mission of God, away from what he said. That Bible is open to you to go back and read it because you are supposed to be equipping disciples for the kingdom of God, for the salvation of souls, not for the attainment of wealth, but for the salvation of souls and helping them to walk in their own righteousness as well. Through Christ, helping them to understand the Holy Spirit can help them to come out of spaces of sin that they are struggling with. Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all things will be added. Not seeking money, not seeking titles, seeking God's kingdom, meaning the work of his kingdom and righteousness. Don't teach them backwards. They don't need to chase, chase stuff. They need to chase the purpose that God put them in this earth and walking it out in a righteous way. And they'll get all the other stuff because God knows what they need. And he will answer even their desires according to his will. So we don't need to sell Christianity to anybody. We don't need to sell it. Like if you come over here, you're going to get something. No, you're going to get salvation if you're looking for it. You're going to get freedom. You're going to get peace. But then you're going to have to obey God to get the other things. You're going to have to grow up in your salvation to get the other things. But we don't chase things. We chase God. We chase God. And so I pray that every believer, you understand that you are responsible for your own walk with God. I know you want to blame it on the pastors. I hear so many people that talk about, well, my pastor ain't teaching that. And my pastor ain't doing this. And my pastor, your pastor is a human being still working on their own soul salvation, still working on their own walk. And a lot of them are growing. Your pastor 20 years ago is different from your pastor today. They are growing. But in the meantime, you don't have time to wait on that. You better get in that word. Read it for yourself. Do what God told you to do. Walk in your own ministry, too, because you have one. Yes, you can go to church and fellowship, but you have a ministry as well because you are a disciple. And that ministry could be right there next to a coworker on your job and next to somebody on a team that you're on. There are plenty of people out here in this world that need to hear from you exactly who you are, how you are, the way you talk, the way you look. Everything about you is intentional. You don't need to change a thing. There are some people that will only receive it from you because they connect with you and your story and the way you connect with them and the way you speak to them. That's okay. You're not trying to get everybody. You're getting the people God assigned to you. Those that he's assigned to you. Pastor Alexis Stevens said, if I got to explain to you why I'm called, you are not my people. <laughs> she explained that so well. If you got to explain to people why you should be talking and speaking into their life, that's not your person. Go find people that will accept the anointing God placed on your life and will accept what you're saying. Go find those people. Those are your people. They will listen. They will hear it. The word of God through your voice. They will hear that anointing and they will be able to listen and turn away from whatever that is in their way from reaching God. And they will get to where they're supposed to be. And don't worry yourself too much over people that won't listen. Again, those are not your people. There will be people that will listen and there will be people that will deny the word of God. They are not rejecting you. They are rejecting God's work in their life. Do not take it personal. We are simply ambassadors of Christ. We are meant to say the word of God to people. We don't force it. That's too much work and it's a heavy burden you don't want to bear. We don't control people with our ministries. We don't control people with the word of God. We are to just say the word of God and let people come to their own level of understanding and conviction. What we are supposed to pray is God, let the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. 
the same way, Lord, that you opened my eyes and allowed me to see you and hear you better. Do it for them, God. And if I'm not the right person to deliver the message, God, send somebody else that they will hear who will relate to them and they will be able to receive from. We should not get upset and agitated over certain people in our life not receiving from us. There's so many reasons why people would want to discredit you. So many reasons. Don't worry about it. That's not your worry. That's not something you should even concern yourself with. Say, God, I will talk to the people you have for me when you lead me to them. But the point is, we have to get out here and go. If you're dealing with old church hurt and old toxic situations from cults or any um, organizations out, out of the body of Christ that they hurt you and they cause you to not walk in fellowship, ask God to heal you and forgive those people. Jesus said it on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. They don't, they know not what they do. They don't know. Why? Because they are sinful, human, fleshly, unwise, not growing yet. The people didn't even have the Holy Spirit yet because Jesus hadn't died. So those people were nowhere near walking in wisdom when they killed the Savior of the world. So you have to know that the same way. When you're dealing with people that do not possess the Spirit of God, they do not have the Holy Spirit you're going to get anything from them, any and everything. Just expect it all. Expect the ignorance because the word of God can only be perceived through the Holy Spirit. It can only be discerned through the spirit. So they're going to think anything you're saying is foolishness. And once you see that that is what they perceive it to be, wash your hands. And ask God to lead you to those who will receive those where it will be fertile ground, those where those are your people. So I pray that you have enjoyed this season. I pray that you have heard some things that resonated in your spirit, some conversations. Make sure you are taking authority over every aspect of your life. You are free to worship where you want to, which with what group you want to fellowship. You need to get under a pastor that knows the word of God. If they are saying things that are not in that Bible because you read it and you know what's in the Bible, leave that congregation. We don't have long lifelong memberships in church organizations. Your lifelong ministry, your lifelong membership is in the body of Christ, not a church building. So you do not have to have this toxic loyalty to staying in a church where you know they are not growing. They're not sending you out to disciple. They're not teaching the word of God correctly. It's a toxic environment. That is your responsibility to remove yourself. And if you have children in that environment, it is your responsibility to remove your children too before they are traumatized and harmed. Get them out of those toxic environments before it affects their relationship with God because that is not God. That is not God. It is your responsibility to read the word of God so that if you walk in any church and you're not hearing what you read at home and it doesn't sound like the love of God, remove yourself as God to help you find another congregation and another connection. If you are still dealing with any type of trauma, a church hurt, or anything from your past experiences that you need healing and counsel over, please connect with me at tarabody.com under services for counseling. Faith is praying God heal me. Works is getting the counseling. It's getting the counseling so you can move forward. So I pray that you have enjoyed this season of Church Heal. I have most certainly enjoyed giving it to you. And I, until next time, this has been Tara Body with God and Therapy. Take care.